Hello everyone, my name is Astha. I welcome you all to our classes for International English Olympiad for class 9th. The topic for today is one word substitution. This is our fifth class in the series and herein for one word substitution we will be understanding what it really is and doing various examples as well. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so what one word substitution signifies is, what do we mean by it? We are going to have words that replace a group of words or a full sentence effectively without creating any kind of ambiguity in the meaning of sentences. Which means one word substitution is what? We will either have a, a group of words or a sentence which will be replaced by another word in such a way that there will not be any kind of ambiguity in the meaning of sentences. Ambiguity means will, it means there will not be any kind of uh, any kind of confusion in the meaning of sentences. That means both of these with whether it is the group of words or the full sentence or this word they will have both of them will have this same meaning. This will be some sort of a substitution, okay? Substitution is what? Where you replace one thing with another and there is uh, no confusion created, no ambiguity created and both of them, they mean the same thing. So that is what is going to happen in one word substitution. All right. So that's what one word substitution is. Now let's move on. Okay, so here we have one word substitutions. Let's see. A self-governing country or region that is called an autonomy. Then we have a system of government in which most of the important decisions are taken by state officials rather than by elected representatives. That form of government could be called a bureaucracy. Then we have a system of government by the whole population for all the eligible members of a state, typically through elected representatives. That government could be called a democracy. Then we have a state, society or group governed by old people. That is a gerontocracy. Then we have a state or country run by the worst leader, least qualified or most unscrupulous citizens. That could be called a cacistocracy. Now here, what is happening is, here we are, uh, we are uh, replacing what? Any group of words or a sentence with one word. And the meaning is not changing. So this is in the simplest form of, this is the simplest form of what? One word substitution. In simple words, uh, replacing a group of words or a sentence with one word without changing its meaning, without creating any kind of ambiguity. All right. So here we have a few examples for one word substitution like um, what did we read about them? Uh, we know that there are a group of words or sentence which is then replaced by one word and there is no kind of ambiguity created which means the meaning is the same. Like here we, when we say one who does not express himself freely that person can be called an introvert. Okay. So here a group of words or sentence is being replaced by the word introvert. Like here, someone who behaves without moral principles. That person could be called immoral. Then a person who is incapable of being tampered with. And person, you know, we shouldn't be tampering with. That's in, impregnable. Then one who is unable to pay his debts. A person, you know, um, who has lost all his money and he's taken so much debt that person and now is unable to pay it. That person could be called an insolvent. A person who is mentally ill could be called a lunatic. And a person who dislikes humankind and avoids human society. A person who in general who just dislikes humankind. That's, that person could be called a misanthrope. Alright, so that's uh, how we're going to do one word substitution. 
you have a you have a sentence or a group of words which can be replaced by another word which can be rather substituted by another word which means it does not create any ambiguity or confusion in its meaning all right this is one set of examples let's move on okay here we have fear of time now fear of time is called chronophobia then we have fear of dogs fear of dogs could be called as xenophobia then an extreme or irrational fear of confined spaces that could be called claustrophobia then we have a delusion of being possessed by evil spirits this could be called as demonomania then we have an abnormal and persistent fear of drinking of drinking alcohol dipsophobia then we have an abnormal and persistent fear of work or finding employment this fear could be called as ergophobia all right these were a few one word substitutions wherein we replaced a group of words or a sentence with one word without creating any sort of ambiguity or confusion or without or you know without changing their meanings all right all right here we have a large group of people now a large group of people could be called a horde then we have a study the scientific study of physiology structure genetics ecology distribution classification economic importance of plants that study could be called botany then we have a person who draws or produces maps that person could be called a cartographer then a person who writes beautiful writing that's calligrapher and uh, as the actually the art of writing uh, the art of writing beautifully could be called calligraphy similarly the study of maps could be called cartography then we have a person who composes the sequence of steps and moves for the performance of a dance that is a choreographer and similarly um, this art of composing the sequence of steps moves for dance performances could be called choreography see now choreography is choreographer is a noun which is referring to a person choreography could be you know an art form or it could be called uh, basically a study of dance moves that way okay so these are again a few examples of one word substitution okay here we have like a place where bees are kept a collection of bee hives apiary then a building containing tanks of live fish of different species aquarium a place a scene of activity debate or conflict could be called an arena all right this is again you know see apiary aquarium these are these all are nouns that we are substituting these group of words or sentences with all right so that's the job of one word substitution we replace a group of words or sentence with another word and there is no ambiguity or confusion created which means this group of words and this word all of them both of them have the same meaning all right we have taken conjunctions par liye now is time to take our quiz conjunctions are not so difficult isme bas aapko kya karna hai इसमें बस जो हमने कंजंक्शंस करे हैं इनके मीनिंग के हिसाब से हमें इनको सेंटेंसेस में फॉर्मेशन में डालना है ऑल राइट द वेरी इजी लेट्स स्टार्ट ऑल राइट सो फॉर द क्वेज व्हाट वी विल बी डूइंग इज नाउ एवरी क्वेश्चन यू विल बी गिवन One minute. One minute means sixty seconds. Why am I giving you one minute? Because you see, your question paper of IEO, it has about fifty uh, questions, and so you can uh, imagine that you know you get more or less a minute to answer the questions. Now this one minute is the maximum that you should be taking for 
answering the question now suppose there could be two three two three categories of students first category is suppose you answer the question within that one minute so i would request you to fast forward the video and uh, skip right to the answer you should not be wasting your time all right now the other students who are not able to answer the question in one minute what you do you don't skip to the answer you pause the video and you write down your answer all right it is very important to answer each and every question because there is no negative marking here you see for every incorrect answer no points because there is no negative marking in ieo so it is important that you attempt all the questions now for a question of which you are not sure about the answer now even here and even in the exam if you are not sure about the answer and you may be think that b option is might be correct or c option might be correct so you should uh, in that case play your luck and play your mind and make a guess and still give an answer because it is a win win situation either you will get the marks for that question or you will get a zero right but if you don't attempt that question at all then you are anyway getting a zero in that right so it is good to attempt those questions and uh, even if you don't know all the answers try to understand and take a guess okay so this is for every correct answer 10 points this is just for your uh, for your own little game where you can try uh, to maintain a notepad so here you write the name of the chapter and then the question and then if it is correct you can give yourself 10 points if it is not correct you mark it here so it is important to mark to see these questions the ones which you mark incorrect it is important to go back to them later and then see where you did the mistake all right this is just for your reference for every correct answer you can give yourself 10 points all right now let's uh, start okay so now we start off with the questions of one word substitution here what we have to do we have to mark the appropriate word for the given descriptions or underlined words now uh, we are given a sentence and from which a part is underlined so we'll see the underlined part and accordingly choose the one word that's one word substitution that suits it okay like here we have the education and gurukul comprised mainly of telling stories of old time gods or goddesses gods or heroes here the uh, the underlined part is stories of old time gods or heroes the options are old uh, epic allegory or legend here the stories of the old time gods or heroes it's known as legend so we are talking about the legends of something that is referred as the old time stories okay now we have the other like here we have ode ode is sort of a sort of a tribute poem which is uh, given to someone 
then we have epic epic is also a story which is a uh, actually from certain older tradition but it's very long okay some older tradition then we have allegory see this is you this is this can be a story it can also be a poem sort of thing which has a hidden moral meaning okay so like uh, these are different in there here we have the answer is legend so in every one word substitution we will not only be learning one uh, but we will also be learning the others then their meanings as well all right next we have in old days the king was considered all powerful veteran omnipotent omnivorous or omniscient now here the correct answer is omnipotent it is very all powerful like we usually refer to god as omnipotent okay and even omniscient omniscient refers to someone who is uh, present uh, everywhere so it is uh, it is a common belief that you know god is omnipotent someone who is all powerful and omniscient also a person who who is you know who has all the knowledge then we have veteran uh, veteran refers to someone who has a very long experience in a certain field we usually refer to them in the armed forces okay then we have omnivorous we know who omnivorous is Um, omnivores are omnivores are those animals which we which eat uh, both plant and uh, animal food all right Okay, here both Buddha and Mahavir lived at the same time. Okay, so here uh, people who live at the same time they are referred to as a simultaneous, b contemporary, c coincident, or d synchronized. Um, the people who live at the same time are referred to as contemporaries. Okay, like two legends or two people who have a uh, suppose in cricket there are two cricketers who have played in the same era. they are referred to as contemporaries okay then we have the other words like simultaneous these are referred to for things okay things that happen at the same time together in a coordinated manner simultaneous coincident and synchronized all these can be referred to particular incidents or things 
but for people we use the word contemporary okay Okay, here a government by the nobles is called a aristocracy, b democracy, c autocracy, or d bureaucracy. Now, a government by the nobles, where you have hereditary titles, it is referred to as an aristocracy. Whereas the other forms of government, like democracy, is a government for the people, by the people, and of the people, which exists in India. Then we have autocracy. Autocracy is basically a government which is influenced by the views of just one person. Okay, like an absolute authoritarian rule. Then we have bureaucracy. Bureaucracy will be the government of officials. Okay, next we have belonging to the same country and having same interests and feelings. Patriot, comrade, uh, compatriot, or native. Okay, so the people who belong to the same country and have a uh, same interests and feelings is compatriot. Refer to as compatriot people, right? The others you see, patriot, patriot is a person who is uh, we can say. Who has such strong faith and such strong support for their country that they are ready to defend it against any enemy, any person who goes against their country? Then we have comrade. Comrade is a, a term which it can be used for a friend or fellows or colleagues. Okay. Then we have native. Native refers to a person who is born who uh, who. Took birth in a certain place, okay. Like uh, uh, B and U, we were born in India, so we are native to India. All right.
Okay, next public sale in which articles are sold to the highest bidders. Sale, auction, wholesale, or D marketing. Now the public sale in which the articles are sold to the highest bidders are is an auction. What happens in an auction? Like people place bids. An article, piece of article is there, and then there are these people who place bids. Like so one person places a bid of hundred rupees. The other person then crosses it and places it suppose at one fifty. The other person crosses it, places at two hundred or two. So whatever the highest bid is placed, the article goes to that person. That is an auction. All right. Sale when uh, the things are at a discount, at are given at a discount. Wholesale is uh, when things are purchased in bulk. All right. Marketing is basically the advertising strategy of promoting their products. a disease which is spread by contact i'm pretty sure you know this meaning by now the this uh, answer by now infectious or spreading or epidemic or contagious now a disease which is spread by human contact is contagious right uh for the others infectious something that uh, that is you know that can be that can be infected from one person to another spreading that uh, from one person to another it is it is spreading and then epidemic epidemic a disease that has spread to the whole country there has the outbreak in the whole country that's an epidemic all right Okay, now next we have using of new words, coinage, neologism, neologism, vocabulary, or malapropism. Now the using of new words is referred to as a uh, neologism. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is also neologism to you. Using of this new word of neologism. Get it? What I did there? So here. neologism refers to the using of new words the other words like coinage coinage uh, is basically refers refer to the uh, coins together okay then we have vocabulary vocabulary actually refers to the body of words in certain language like in english english vocabulary the body of words in english then we have 
malapropism malapropism refers to we can say it's actually a very um, interesting interesting noun a uh, malapropism refers to that uh, activity wherein you see what happens you are trying to say uh, something serious or something uh, you are trying to say a say a statement in which there is a word which you mispronounce or uh, you say another word in place of it okay and that that word actually gives a very funny effect to the statement that you were making this happens generally with a lot of people but we did not have a name for it now you we had a name for it probably you didn't know about it so now you have this name which is malapropism let me give you an example like suppose um okay suppose we uh, you are at your annual function and you are saying that you know we all have gathered here for this auspicious occasion so the word here is auspicious auspicious means something you know which is religious and a little bit holy okay you are talking in terms of religious that it is a very auspicious occasion like suppose we talk about diwali diwali celebration or something it is an auspicious occasion you have to say but instead of auspicious you say it is a suspicious occasion so you see uh, because of the similar sounding uh, words similar sounding letters in here you instead of saying auspicious you say suspicious so incorrectly you have used another word and it it gave a it gave an amusing effect to the statement so that thing is called as malapropism okay so this question was very interesting you heard pretty sure you uh, learned these new words of neologism and malapropism and i'm and i would really request you to you know use these and it is going to really add up to what add up to your vocabulary okay Okay, next, a field or a part of garden where fruit trees grow. The options are park, nursery, orchard, or yard. Now, a field or the part of garden where the fruit trees grow is referred to as the orchard. Okay. All right. The next one says one who is likable. Okay, so for a person who is likable, civilized, amiable, effusive, or deponent. 
so here the person who is likable we can call him amiable amiable is a person you know who is friendly and behaves nicely with people that's amiable then we have civilized someone who behaves in a uh, who behaves in a civil civil respectable manner then we have effusive effusive refers to someone who shows uh, who shows heartfelt gratitude and pleasure and you know uh, all the time sometimes in an extreme manner as well people you know who say thank you a lot all that's not a bad thing but in people that that's a good thing but the people who show heartfelt gratitude often those are effusive we can say then we have deponent deponent actually um can be referred to someone under law someone who, uh, who is you know uh, said to make an oath or said to you know give give a certain uh, deposition that is a deponent all right Okay, now we have a fault that may be forgiven. The options are venial, mercenary, corrupt, or grabby. Now, fault that may be forgiven is referred to as venial. All right. Okay, so the others what we have mercenary. Mercenary refers to someone who uh, doesn't really think about ethics when they uh, when they have this opportunity of making money. okay so that person can be called mercenary and that person can also be called corrupt and that person can also be uh, you know called grabby you know person who person who takes any opportunity of being selfish and uh, doesn't really think about the ethics so mercenary corrupt grabby okay so with this we finish off with questions on one word substitution i really hope you have learned these uh new words they will add to your vocabulary and also please use them in your uh writing skills in your communication otherwise all this is going to be a really futile exercise okay all right so that's all for a class in one word substitution i hope you have understood the basic premise and uh, you know how to substitute the phrases the sentences into one uh, i also hope that you have that you have you know learned a few new word meaning sort of things as well so you know note them down and revise them so that you can use them in your conversations and uh, also it you know just adds on to your vocabulary so i will see you the next time till then keep learning and keep revising Thank you.